It okay. is December 4th, uh, 2013, and we're having a uh, Youth Voices get-together, and a few other people might be joining us, but we've got some uh, Youth Voices star teachers here tonight. Um, so I, I'm always excited to sit down with you guys. Uh, so Shantu Nusaha is, is with us, um, Karen Festpower, uh, Joe Paraisio, and uh, Chris Sloan. And um, and others may be joining us as as we proceed here tonight. Um, there is room. Uh, John, it, the um, link to this is uh, at edtechtalk.com/ttt. If anybody wants to just jump in uh, this hangout, just feel free to do that um, as we go. Um, Shantanu, I, we yeah. were just saying right before I did the official opening there that. Um, you are oh, Jake is joining us. You you are um, somebody who I haven't seen for for a very long time, but um, yeah. have a long relationship with um, mm -hmm. back to when you were student teaching, um, and now you've been yeah. teaching how many years? Oh, uh, well, I was a student teacher in 1993, mm -hmm. and it's 20 years later. So <laughs> that's very cool. So uh, introduce yourself a little bit, though. Where do you well, teach, and what are you teaching this year? Because we can all catch well, up. Well, I, yeah, I yeah. teach at the Baccalaureate School for Global Education. Uh, and uh, for the past few years, I've been teaching 7th uh, uh, and 8th grade technology. And uh, I teach uh, the entire 8th uh, grade uh, uh, during the fall semester and the entire 7th grade during the spring semester. Uh, and, uh, and by the entire, how many people is that? Well, uh, this year the eighth grade is 108 students in four uh, four classes. Uh, I haven't uh, uh, counted uh, how many uh, seventh graders there are this year, but uh, uh, there are only uh, three classes of seventh graders this year. For the uh, okay. and, so, what are you teaching this year? Well, the past couple of years, I have been teaching a computer programming sequence. Uh, I uh, start off uh, in the seventh grade with uh, introduction to uh, uh, internet concepts, uh, safety on safety on the internet, uh, how to uh, uh, you know uh, interact with uh, social media and so on on the internet, and uh, youth voices is part of that. Uh, and from there, I go on to teaching them the basics of computer programming by first uh, teaching uh, uh, an animation program uh, from MIT called Scratch. Uh, and then by the end of the uh, end of the semester in, in uh, seventh grade, we start doing HTML. Uh, and I carry it over into the eighth grade. Uh, we uh, I teach HTML and then uh, uh, CSS, which is cascading style sheets, and then JavaScript. And uh, that's what I'm uh, currently uh, uh, wrapping up right now. Uh, but your your students also do a lot of book talk as well, don't they? Well, uh, I don't uh, do the book talks with. Uh, uh, with my uh, uh, with my technology classes, I do that with my advisories. Mm -hmm. I have a tenth grade and eighth grade advisory, and uh, uh, what I've done was I have uh, this year I've instituted uh, uh, the uh, the uh, grid curriculum that you have for. Uh, with voices, I made a modified version of that, and uh, I've turned that into my uh, advisory curriculum, essentially. Uh, huh. uh, could, well, could we see that modification someday? <laughs> uh, I'd love to. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually just a, a few minutes ago. I was trying to get it. Uh, it's. Uh, Accessible in Google Docs from another account. Unfortunately, I have to go back and uh, and share okay. it with this account. I, I have to uh, take a uh, sample and share it. So just uh, 
Uh, cool, cool. But um, the kids who are posting though the the projects, which are fascinating projects, and we want right. to get to, to get to some of those questions, I think, um, have sixteen by their name. Doesn't that mean they're graduating in twenty sixteen? Yes, that's oh. that's my tenth grade advisory. That's your tenth grade advisory. Yeah. Oh, in, wow. uh, in 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 my school, in the tenth grade, the students have to do a personal project, uh, which is a uh, part of the uh, International Baccalaureate Liberal Years Program curriculum. Mm -hmm. Uh, by the seven, by the tenth grade uh, end of tenth grade, they're supposed to uh, complete a year long independent project. Uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, what I uh, told the kids was one way uh, they can integrate uh, what they're doing in advisory uh, with their personal project was to have the have the topics. That they cover in their uh, advisory explorations be personal project related topics. So mm -hmm. they're uh, therefore killing two birds with one stone. They're uh, uh, working uh, toward their advisory uh, literacy goals. But the, uh, you know, the uh, uh, these uh, tasks that they're doing, I call them advisory literacy tasks. Uh, and they're doing them in conjunction with research that they have to do with their personal for their personal project anyway. Great. So, Chantanu, I feel like a, a host at a party, and I've got you in a corner, and uh, we want to get everybody else <laughs> in the conversation here if we can. Um, so, so, but, but thanks. I mean, thanks for catching us up on most of that. I mean, and um, I do have one one. <laughs> I have last little question, and pe people, plea others here on the line. And Jake, uh, welcome. Um, here on the line, um, can can jump in. And Monica, welcome. The um, so one of the one of the things that happens is that people um, think youth voices is this really hard thing to get involved in. And as I watch you over the years, you've kind of found your own way to just use it. For your own purposes, is that, right. is that essentially? Yeah. yeah. I, uh, what I've done was I have uh, used it in ways to uh, help the, my students uh, in uh, in my advisories and in my classes to uh, publish and uh, express themselves in a public forum. Uh, Using youth voices as as that public forum, mm -hmm. uh, and you you can see that in the last couple of years, uh, especially when I uh, ask my seventh grade students to post their uh, their ethical story animation uh, projects, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, and I apologize for having those projects uh, bogged down the site to the point where it uh, is. Yeah. Becomes unresponsive at times. So the very yeah. quick, go ahead, Chris, go ahead. Um, well, you know, um, I some of my students were responding to a couple of yours today, commenting mm -hmm. on a couple of your students' work mm -hmm. today, and um, you know they were pretty engaged in a um, couple of those. Uh, I don't know six. Uh, I only know them by their screen names, but now um, Ancona. They, they were able yeah. to get to them. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually, you know, you sent around a link uh, maybe last week to a different listserv, Paul, and then I found another one of Shantanu's uh, students. So um, I just tossed it out and said, um, here's a couple of people who um, look like they're doing some interesting stuff. Uh, feel free to chime in there. And, um, you know, a number of students took me up on that, and I, I was impressed with their um, feedback that they gave to your students, and um, and just to kind of preface that a little bit um, with my history of youth voices too, like I um, I think I was really big on the um, um, using it as a publishing platform, but now more and more I'm finding the value in having the students comment on other people's uh, work. So just like um, Joe Pariso's students in Oakland, um, my students actually are um, liking um, reading your student stuff and just um, trying to add to the conversation. Okay. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, let me just uh, go over here and uh, share. So, as you're doing that, one of the, one of the th um, I, I was in a workshop, a Scratch workshop at the uh, National Writing Project just uh, a couple weeks ago, with with Mitch, Mitch Resnick and and so forth. And I did, I, I got there early, and I did mention to him that we had like years of uh, projects that you had put up. And then when they went to Flash, we lost all of that. But and right. was that still right? So yeah, that was which, that was a problem that I, I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. Uh, yeah, he said you just have to go back in and put the new code up. But, yeah, and yeah. unfortunately there were so many of them that I just uh, I just could not get around to uh, uh, finding each individual one and but, uh, and, but, uh, and reloading it. So. But what 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 I can say is that that but, I, but so but they, they it is true that their their embed code was killing our browsers and right. um, so it's good that they improved it. Um, yes. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, so you know you give and you and you and you lose it here and there. But but it it was a wonderful thing that you did where you had the younger students or wait yeah the students as they were coming in look at last year's students work. Right. Um, as as they proceeded, right? Yes. So. Uh, that that was one of the things that once I once I had a library of uh, of uh, already uh, posted animations. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the first things I did with the new uh, class of students was to have them go back to the previously uh, created uh, animations and uh, and view them and uh, and comment on them. As uh, an entry into the subject, so that uh, so that uh, uh, they had models that they could uh, that they could look at and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, inspect and uh, yeah. have some idea of what they what they want to do. So Jake is uh, an art teacher in, at my school. I just wanted to inter reintroduce. He's been on the show, for, uh, I don't know, back in September a while. Jake, say hello. <laughs> How are you doing? You're, uh, you got on me. There you go. Can you hear me? Um, yep. Good. Yeah, hey, guys. Yeah, I was, I was just listening. I was, I was amazed. I was fascinated by uh, how much you seem like you do in a year with your 7th and 8th graders. <laughs> um, and uh, I was just wondering, are you like in a urban or a suburban or setting? Or... We're in New York City. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, what borough? Uh, Queens. Hmm. Right. <laughs> All right. Well, um, you know, it, it sounds amazing. I was just playing around with Scratch um, in the last week or two since you know Paul started. Uh, I guess uh, introducing it in school. I, Paul, were you able to get any students on board? I just, I, yeah, anybody, anybody who needs a little extra to do. I, so that's how I'm starting it. But yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it, it's really intuitive, so it's great. Um, but um, you know, if you have, if if you had, um, you know, some old stuff that was in Flash, a real quick and dirty thing that you could do is just, uh, you know, video capture it. Convert it, you know, right, right there to a quick time, and just at least have a sample of it. If you don't have the interactivity, you know, just to, just to document what those kids did. It's easier than that, though. They can just use the new code and put it up. Yeah. The, the well, new, yeah. So yeah. yeah. But just. It would yeah just. <laughs> but but um, what we need to do is we need to just go back and uh, put the new new embed codes uh, into each post and. Uh, uh, and, so, uh, and that should should make everything work. We j I just uh, haven't been able to find the time uh, to uh, to do that because it takes several minutes uh, for yeah. each one, and I have uh, over two. It'd be a good minutes. project for for somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, I uh, that may be a project that I might uh, uh, get a student assistant to uh, to work on. Mm. Uh, mm. Because it, it, it's worth having the history, I, th I think. But yeah. So, Joe, why don't you check in? Tell us what you're up to and get us involved here. Um. Uh, let's see. The latest round of posts my kids are doing is about 
Can you um, just say where you are again, just briefly? Oh, right? Oakland. Most we are in like, yeah. East Oakland, California. So um, what the kids are up to right now is getting prepped for going to go watch uh, a film on Friday together. We have about 80 seniors to, that are going to go see Fruitvale Station, many for the first time. Uh, so they've been posting some today and some tomorrow. But uh, Shantanu, my kids did want to also respond to yours, so if there's a way that we could connect there. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Youth Voices has opened up a lot. This classroom, though, this class that I've had, on it, it, this is their second year, um, and so it's they're getting more and more used to the fact that everything is vloggable, and or most everything is vloggable. And uh, we spend for right now, it's been less about publishing like maybe their creative work and more about ways for them to use ways for them to engage in a dialogue with other grown-ups. So, uh, like with their senior research projects recently, they just started. Uh, I connected them with a grown-up, someone who was a professional engaged in the research process at some point, to grade their thesis as of now. So it was really cool to get a whole bunch of other folks on Youth Voices who are not students, who are the teachers that I'm trying to introduce this to. And it was, the feedback was really positive. Um, it was a very gentle way. So when you talk, Paul, about uh, people being, uh, that they're not jumping on board right away or, or for whatever reason. Um, this It was a really nice way to get a, uh, at least 10 teachers on my site to kind of engage with the kids in this dialogue. So um, those, those teachers are your colleagues in, yeah. in your building? In my building. In my, uh, well, on the campus. Um, yeah, and then a whole yeah. bunch from the community that I pull, like uh, our local university uh, mills. So uh, it's been, it's been, yeah. It's been very fruitful in the last two weeks for blogging, or last three weeks or so. So, um, yeah, that's where we're at. So, Shantanu, um, and, and just to say this for everybody, one of the things that um, that people have been asking is is somehow for you to get a, a, a school page up. Yeah. And, right. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, the, the, the thing is you don't need that because you do this... You, you like, use a, a reader of some sort to keep track of your kids' work, is that right? Uh, I just use RSS feeds to okay. just keep track of uh, when my students post uh, their work. And uh, uh, then when I uh, go to grade them, uh, one of the things that I, that I do is uh, I have them... Uh, uh, I put the grid up as a Google Doc, uh, share it with my students, have them make copies of it, and then uh, all of their work, all of their evidence, they are supposed to link to in that Google Doc. So I simply go in and simply click on the links and then go and see the work, mm -hmm. and that's much easier to uh, be able to do and grade. And so uh, this way, let me just uh, sh so, share. So you, you kind of get, though, why people would want to see, like... So, so what, can you can you break down that the one student? I think Chris, um, you said your students are going to respond to the one who's who's writing about fiction and video games. That's a yeah. fascinating question. Uh, you're, uh, I think you're talking about Alcona, right? I'm uh, not yes. sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, good. Uh, I actually have that. Let me see if I can. Bring. I that just put up. a link in the chat room to uh, one post by that person. Mm -hmm. uh, that some of my comments, uh, some of my students commented on. It was a Lord of the Flies thing. And it's kind of interesting because, first of all, the, the post itself is really thoughtful, just like every one of the students' um, posts. And then um, I noticed that your student, at least on one day on the 14th, then responded to a couple of comments mm -hmm. that that person had received. And then, see, my students just put some comments, and I don't know when... Um, that person might come across my students' comments was right. where I was. Uh, okay. So let me uh, share my... Uh, You're going to share the screen? I'm going to share the screen. Okay. There we go. And so make this uh, a little bit bigger. So what I have here is the, the Google Doc that uh, Alcona did for her uh, uh, September th uh, that uh, uh, 
She started in September and was uh, uh, completed in October. Uh, one of the things that I ask students to do is, uh, within that time frame, which is between five to six weeks, I ask them to read one fiction book and one nonfiction book. Okay. These the are fiction book can be yeah. anything that they want. The nonfiction book should be uh, related to the topic of their inquiry question. Uh, so they have an inquiry question that uh, uh, that uh, they are going to post right over Where here. Where do those come from? Because they've been fascinating this year. Well, for the 10th graders, the inquiry questions come directly from their personal project work. So the nonfiction books are supposed to be related to their personal project uh, research. And so this is a way for them to uh, deeply analyze the books that they're uh, uh, working on, that they're reading for their personal project research. For, for my eighth graders, it's, it's much more freeform, so they can choose any, uh, any books that they want and uh, uh, choose an inquiry question that's simply related to the topic of the book. Uh, um, before you move off of that, student, um, you know, what I liked about that, too, um, was the um, student's connection between Lord of the Flies and what's going on in Syria. I think yeah. there's a lot of, um, like you mentioned, there's, you know, sometimes we, or a lot of times we teach literature, but it doesn't always ring true for students, like how that connects with now. Right. And uh, what I notice about your students' work is that they, you know, they do a lot of, Pretty neat thinking, uh, pretty insightful thinking, I should say, about like current events and classic literature. Right. Well, I think uh, part of it is uh, due to the structure of the of the literacy tasks, as you see right here. We are looking right here. This is simply a version of uh, Paul's Grid, uh, and uh, you can see challenges. Uh, uh, Reflect and connect, wonder and dream, notice and investigate, construct and express. And then independent reading. First they do a free write, then they uh, read. Uh, uh, and uh, the free write, I ask them to do directly on the school device. So below the grid, you can see all of the, uh, wow, that's all the work that they're doing. And whatever they uh, actually post on Youth Voices, they actually start writing right on this Google Doc. So all of their work is going to appear here. So uh, so one of the things that I do is I simply read everything that's here uh, first and then just go uh, to Youth Voice to check that you know, that they've actually posted it. So it makes it a lot easier for me to grade uh, and, to, and to read uh, because it's, it's all in one place. Interesting. So, and, and you're doing this in advisory? This isn't an English class? This is just an advisory. Uh-huh. Interesting. Yeah. Advisory, advisory is, uh, then. For, for, well, advisory How often does it meet? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it, it meets every day for 35 minutes. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I... But they I can't be doing this work in that 35 minutes, can they? No. Uh, uh, so they're supposed to be doing the work uh, mostly independently. I give them uh, uh, time and advisory to, uh, on most days, uh, they will uh, eat, have a choice of either reading or working on these literacy tasks. Uh, uh, some days I have them do other things, but, uh, but the majority of time in advisory is spent either doing actual reading or uh, working on these literacy tasks uh, uh, in some way, shape, or form. Uh, but but they're also supposed to be doing some of some if not uh, a, a good portion of this work outside of, of, of class. So again, I where are we? I I kind of feel like I I love personally I love looking at the minutia and I'm totally fascinated by how we can or interested in how we can be doing better to share. Um, curriculum and yeah. and and do iterations of the curriculum. So I just wanted to ad identify that theme. That's something that came up this summer when Karen was at the Youth Voices Summer Program. We had a really interesting conversation there too. 
Karen, do you can you hit that theme a little bit and what you're seeing here? And does that make sense to say that? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, because because uh, P2PU also has a really great clone thing, right? So basically, right. Shantanu has cloned something here, and yeah. Right. But, so, I mean, just the idea would be to just post this so other people can sort of use it and and like Paul said, iterate on it. And I mean, I guess it could be posted. Could it be posted as a mission on Youth Voices, or it could be a challenge on P2PU, or it could be just on a website. But it'd be nice to have it linked on um, Youth Voices. Right. Uh, I think that's yeah. more people could access it. Well, I would prefer not to uh, 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 link uh, the actual student documents uh, right now, simply because uh, sometimes yeah. sure. what they write is a little bit private. Uh, uh, and. Uh, no, no, I, I think we were talking about the curriculum. Yeah, Just right. the yeah I, I can, yeah, I cer I can certainly link uh, so, that. So one of, the, one of the sort of, so yes, creating a mission, and I, so can we talk about that, missions and, and so forth, um, a little bit, but um, on Youth Voices, because I, I, made, I made a couple, I opened a couple of things up uh, this, this weekend, and I want to talk about that, but um, one of the one of the sort of compromises that or compromises I don't know solutions is is if each of us has a school page, um, I've embedded Chris your 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 curriculum blog at the bottom of the school page, so it's it's right. So you just go to Chris's school page and it's right there, and I've done that with yours also, Joe. And Joe, I noticed on the last assignments you had your students linked to the assignment on yeah. your blog, right? Yeah. So. If we get the idea of people want to see the context of the posts, we can find lots of different solutions, I think. And while I'm thinking about it, Shantanu, uh -huh. if you would like a school page, if you have an easy way to send me your students' usernames, I'll make a school page for you. I mean, I, I get that you don't really need it, but I think it would no, be great for other people. We need it. Yeah, we I were making it. <laughs> No, uh, yeah, I, I can uh, certainly send you uh, all my students' usernames pretty easily. Uh, I just awesome. have to uh, take them out of my gradebook and uh, just uh, copy and paste them and send them to you. Cool. I'll put my email in the chat. Because one of the things I was noticing was the similarities between like Joe's students and then Chantanu's and then uh, mine. Yeah. In that, um, you know, there's real strong connection of like reading and trying to make sense of the reading in the students' worlds as they live them, and then Absolutely. also, and also just uh, my students are going to begin actually doing similar research as yours, Joe's. Um, I um, they've just been doing some inquiry questions, but um, they're going to begin a more sustained kind of research thing for the next couple months. So um, again, it's I think it's really important to reach out to each other when we're especially when we're doing similar things yeah. in different places. Agreed. So what are, what are some real practical things we can do right now to make that happen better? <laughs> we, we said Shantanu's school page, we get that. But, but Paul, to, yeah, go ahead. Um, no, because you had made this. I don't even know what which TTT it was where you had said about you had made that statement about how we share the curriculum. So now the kids are like today's post. They gave the framework for how they like they gave the context for what they were doing. So instead of me posting a link to the to the class site, they 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 just talked about what the work of the class and and the same ones that are going that are blogging tomorrow are going to do it. Mm. Um, but I don't know. I kind I, I kind of like them talking about the work we're doing. But I do like the idea, like just going back and linking the page was really easy because I just sent that to the kids and then they just copied and pasted. Yeah. And yeah. it worked it for works. us. And the school page listed at the bottom. Of, I mean, our the class site listed at the bottom of our school page is super helpful. For that was helpful for my teachers over on my site. It was very easy. All right. So I have, I have a suggestion. Jake, jump. Yeah. Go ahead. And can I, Jake, make your suggestion, and I'd like to talk a little bit about where you collect all the work, too, and the issues around that. Uh, Go ahead. Um, 
I'm I'm putting everything on Google Plus because it's it's super easy to upload and view every single day and for all the kids to see all their stuff um, if they have a computer. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was gonna suggest that. Um, but but go ahead, make your suggestion. <laughs> yeah, if everybody wants to, if if anybody wants to check it out, it's on Google Plus. It's NDSS Art and. What it is, it's um, this thing I've been trying to put together for a long time, and it's just starting to take shape. But I wanted to um, document every single thing that the kids do in class every single day, and then have just kind of like a general Google Plus, you know, feed of the things that people share, um, and uh, the the conversations that happen. And in our school, it's been really hard to get um, substantive conversations going. Um, and so, you know, one of the suggestions I was going to say, you know, for this group is if you ha if we have like, f you know, five people online at the same time, just to all kind of like visit each teacher's site and, you know, maybe leave some comments and posts for the kids and they'll be like, wow, four teachers, you know, are, are commenting on my stuff or, you know, do, do it with a whole class, let's say. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it's really powerful for them. And... One of the other things I was I was asking Paul about, um, I think last week was, how come there aren't kids online on these Google Hangouts? Because, you know, if you're if you're you know talking to the, you know, test subjects, you know, it's you know with with a whole bunch of teachers all at the same time, it really does so much for the kid. But um, you know, everyone can kind of trying to acclimate, you know, what it could be like if kids were using this technology that we're using, you know, in the classroom, you know, on a really high level. So that's all I wanted to say. Mm -hmm. hey, um, and, go ahead, Chris. Well, Jake, that's really, uh, you know, I think about that too. Like, where do you see that going? Like, if my students could talk to yours, hang out with yours, um, kind of mm -hmm. what's... Well, what would you in, really in our, best case scenario kind of stuff? Well, in, in our school, we kind of have a free reign right now to set up a laptop in the classroom and, and hit uh, Google Hangout. So uh, we could have the whole classroom interacting with um, five other classrooms. And, um, you know, if, if kids are on their laptops, let's say, and it's kind of a mellow, you know, environment. Um, you could just have like kind of general area where the camera is, maybe like a corner, and just have a table of kids that are outgoing and want to, you know, um, you know, um, communicate with the same corresponding table in the other classrooms. And a teacher is there, just you know, on the projector, just checking it all out. And you could step in anytime you need to. Can Can I jump on that boat? Go ahead. And Shantanu, um, do you mind bringing you back? Yeah. Sorry. So. I just, <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Joe. Oh, so um, Chris, so what? So Paul had us on some of my students on a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago, and we dealt with after dealing with all the technical difficulties of getting the kids on, um, and we finally figured out what the issue was. It was we ended up we signed off, and then we had a Google Hangout together for an hour after. And to me, I just had this mind blowing revelation, and I, I said. This is where academic, so where there's a big push right now, Common Core, for academic discussion, um, and our district mm -hmm. is pushing that a lot. And it was the best conversation I had had with students in a very long time, and it was four kids, uh, three kids, and myself, and for an hour we talked about senior project. We talked about our reactions to that one, that, to that whole TTT, but we also just started gravitating towards, let's just talk about our projects. If that's not academic discussion at its, at, at its most natural, um, I don't know. It was amazing, and that was all done. And you know, we were watching each other eat, and that was great. And it was just a very comfortable setting. <laughs> so that speaks to where I want to take the academic discussions now, because I can totally see a Socratic seminar happening um, in the comfort of our own homes, and I could have one every night of the week or something. And you know, and the kids just sign on, and it's not difficult once we work out the first technical issues, because that that was interesting. Um, so there's to that, and then Jake. I just wanted to say we have kids right now that um, I have students right now that aren't necessarily doing well with the traditional curriculum that um, is offered through me for English. Mm -hmm. And so because of our construction and architecture and design program at our school, that's my academy. 
Um, I we figured out alternative plans for how they can, and Youth Voices is an integral part of that. So one of my students, uh, Juan, is in the wood shop every single day, documenting his process, building monthly projects, and he's an amazing woodworker. Um, and he's posting that he's he's so he did his first postings on Youth Voices about his first project, but. I can totally see where my students that are in the architecture and design program could do that engagement with your students in art about the the art that they're doing um, in a very authentic way. And I, I, I'd love to see it happen in a, you know, where are you in the process of creating this piece and where are our kids in the process of creating yeah. a piece and just talking about the pieces. Um, well, we're, yeah. we're, we, we have, have this lot, wonderful, go ahead. Uh, we, we have a lot of kids that are uh, less connected and um, when I when I tried doing a Google Hangout earlier this year, we did we did one of these you know just for a bunch of art teachers, um, and you know the following week we did a Google Hangout. We um, we did two different times during the day, and um, you know the 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 classroom thing like making it really formal didn't work because the kids were like a li they were um, kind of frozen. But then I took the laptop into the hall. And I just caught a couple of kids that were not supposed to be in the hall, and put the laptop down on the windowsill, and we did about 45 minutes with the the classroom for Canada because there wasn't you know that there wasn't that like stiff pressure to like you know we're gonna do a lesson and we're gonna have to write an essay and stuff. So um, you know it, it was it was an introduction that. Um, I think the kids on the Canada side got a lot more out of, but uh, you know they were connected with the Bronx and they were seeing, you know, what was going on in the hall, and you know, it, you know, we 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 showed each other's art. I you know I had a bunch of art of, of my kids' art, and they were sh they were just going around the ki the room with the laptop to each table, showing what the kid was doing, good or bad, and um, you know we spoke about it, and then you know the really good stuff kind of rises to the top. You know, and then you start talking to those kids. So, um, you know, the, the kids can jump in and take the lead, you know, very quickly on this, you know. Um, so, you know, I was, I was thinking about doing it, uh, try to, trying to do it a lot more routinely, you know, but without any kind of, you know, structure, you know, even if it's like, because uh, sometimes the time zones are weird and the hours are weird. Um, and, I, and I also asked Paul about, Staying connected with some of our kids, you know, we have a lot of teachers in our school that are calling kids at all different hours to make sure that they get to school on time and to make sure they're okay and stuff like that. So, you know, I was saying, you know, to Paul that for the kids that really need some kind of connection at home with something, um, you know, what if two teachers from the school, yeah. you know, connect with them and um, you know maybe a couple other kids, whoever you know, whoever's around. And you know, just keep it like you know, short and sweet, but let them know that you know we're we're thinking about you, you know, and um, you know that they have somewhere to you know email or chat or text or whatever. And uh, I don't know, that might go you know that might go a ways because Paul knows we have some we have some issues running around. <laughs> Who us? In our school, we, we really do. It's the first year. We're managing. Um, it is what it is. The um, yeah. So so, yeah. I I, I think we do need to figure out some of the details of. Uh, you said some good words there, but like routine, not structured, um, regular. You know, those those Let seem like. Initiate. I mean, look yeah. what we're doing right now. We just yeah. sort of uh, you know at. at, at at five to nine, I wasn't sure you guys were going to show up, you know, and and like, do we have a structure here? You know, not really, sort of. But but you know what we do have is we have a project that we're doing together, right? So it does feel important that that they don't just get on and talk about the weather on some level, because because that that gets old pretty fast, you know, for them. They don't, I think. So, so having a, you know, <laughs> having read something on Youth Voices or looked at somebody's art already, um, you know, is is a good idea. It seems to me, the structure. But yeah, yeah, I'd I'd like to get a lo a little more of the art that we have on Google Plus moved over to Youth Voices because it well, seems like a lot of schools 
don't have the freedom to just put their kids on Google Plus, and but you know, Youth Voice is completely, um, you know, uh, moderated environment and stuff. Yeah, and we have the advantage of of you know, right right now, your art class stays right there, and uh, I come in and we do English, so we we need to do that more. <laughs> but, so yeah, we can we can we can make try to make that happen. Um, all right. So uh, let me, can I? So what? This is going to seem totally obvious, but um, it hasn't been. So the what what I finally figured out this weekend is that we could open up missions to students creating them. So now any member on Youth Voices can create the, a mission. So I wanted to kind of ask. Um, to start thinking about that a little bit, um, and and I don't know where that will go necessarily, but um, one idea I had was that um, since all three of you, um, Shantanu, Joe, and, and Chris are doing research projects, um, one of the things teachers do is they set up articles for kids to read, right? So when they do their bibliographies, what if they created a mission for, you know, others in the future sometime who were interested in, I don't know, child welfare? And um, here are three really great articles that you could read. And so that could go up as a mission on Youth Voices. And what, what's actually wonderful about missions is that it's, it's pretty easy to attach just like Shantanu did with the scratch, going back to that, it's pretty easy to attach the um, the posts that are examples. So, I, I I didn't explain that terribly well, but does it open up thinking at all to think about what a mission is? If if now students can do it too, <laughs> or what questions or thoughts do you have about it? So yeah. Well, Let me I say one more question. thing. Go ahead, Chris. So, but both Joe, Joe, both you and Chris, I, I'll let you talk. Both you <laughs> both you both do this thing on your blogs, and it's very directly to your students. And I get that. And and the difference with a mission is it becomes um, more generic in some way, or more for all students. So yeah, I'll shut up now. <laughs> <laughs> So Chris, I, get, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I post the curriculum on my site. So are you saying it's like taking what's on the site and just recreating it for the entire planet, or? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, well, well I, I, I said yes to ask. What does that feel like when you say that, though? I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, I having my stuff out there. I don't. I who's really looking? I don't know. Um, but for the kids creating the missions, I, I totally can see a few, not a bunch, but like a couple of my more savvy folk um, creating a mission around with their senior project that could be considered their field research where they just, they're designing, say, mm -hmm. may, uh, like they test out some of their theories. Like if, if kids played, if somebody played video games for an hour and documented such and such, then they would realize, I don't know, and then the kid would go online or play some, I don't know, I, I'm just trying to think of what some of my techie kids are researching so, about. So you, so a mission could, be, absolutely, a mission could be as simple as that. Um, play, it could be a paragraph that says, play a game tonight and 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 answer these questions after you play the game. But yeah, that's what right? I'm saying. And then no, and then no, no. so so my students would get that mission right. and and post on Youth Voices and then your yeah. student would go back and attach those to the mission. So we And then of, and then yeah. my student takes that data and is able to incorporate that into their research paper right now and that's very real primary source collection. Yes. I totally see that. Yeah. Do you want me to do that tomorrow or <laughs> I don't know. I we're we're figuring this out. Um, yeah, yeah, yes. Please do it tomorrow. No. <laughs> I don't know. Chris, were, you had questions or thoughts? Um, well, there's the mission um, that you um, spoke about in an email, as I recall. But you also um, said something to me about you know um, sometimes my students will post things that are um, directly in response to something that I have them do in my class. 
And so, and you know, I have this kind of sneaking suspicion that the, a series of posts about the same thing is maybe not the best way to talk about this same thing, right? So, um, so for instance, let's say Shantanu, let's say your your whole class read um, Lord of the Flies. So, you know, does everybody launch a post about what the what Lord of the Flies means to me? It seems like things get lost uh, when doing that way. So, Paul, I think you had mentioned something about, or at least this is what I took away from it, that, you know, uh, it's maybe a wiki-like kind yeah. of task so the, sometimes. So the, other, so the other two, I think there are two things that I've opened up to students being able to do now is a page. So you can just create a web page um, on Youth Voices now, um, and and the other is a wiki. And, and it's they're not really wikis on some level because um, you can't collaboratively work on it, but um, they're really just discussion posts that are open for other people to edit. So anybody can edit the discussion posts that you put up, right? Um, but, and they're called wikis. So um, they... And, and I actually think there is some advantage to not messing around with the form too much so it looks the same as a discussion post, you know, so you don't have to think that through too much, but right. So I felt like I needed this in working with uh, science teachers and social studies teachers, and and in particular um, projects that would look at artifacts, for example. Um, so if we if we so a project could be you know tell a story about uh, how women were treated in ancient Egypt. Um, using primary sources, right? Um, so they would collect those primary sources and... But the audience would still be Youth Voices, right? But it, that feels different than a discussion post. So that's some of the thinking. Or the geology of, of New York City, you know, collecting pictures of rocks um, on a page feels like a different thing. And maybe your woodworking guy would also, there might be like a how-to thing that would go on a wiki or something. So I, I just just want to at least put out there the idea, what's the difference between a discussion post and a wiki? So, when when yeah. it comes to, uh, you know, like curating pictures, um, I find that's really great for, I mean, we have some kids that don't want to try drawing and they don't they don't feel comfortable. But, um, you know, to me, it's art if you're just going on Google Images and, and collecting pictures yeah. that, and sharing them with somebody else. I mean, we're doing Egypt right now in our school, and, um, you know, uh, just telling kids, you know, that are, you know, they're, they're not really with the books, and they're not really, you know, with the writing. So as a lot of our kids are, are L's. Um, they can just grab pictures that they like, you know, and... Share them with the other people and discuss it, you know, through the comments, you know, w with teachers helping or, or or other students kind of guiding them, you know, through explaining why they they picked it. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. So yeah, so uh, and that makes really clear that we don't want to reproduce Wikipedia, like you know. So how can we make wikis that are fun? And like student-centered and thoughtful, but at the same time, have a voice that is editable and you know not necessarily I voice in, in it. So, well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, one thing that comes to mind uh, in my particular situation, let's just think English for now and not yeah. um, photography, but like in English. Um, I'm always, you know, I mentioned this before, is like, how are things still relevant? You know, why do we continue to read these books year after year? And, um, you know, a lot of Wikipedia is like plot summary and, you know, uh, bio biographical information, which is pretty fixed. Um, but mm -hmm. the thing that, to me, um, differentiates like a student um, wiki that is really... Uh, creating knowledge, I think, as a group, would be to continually update its relevancy. So, again, I go back to the post from the students of Shant News that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, that is always new. Like, 
you to write about how Lord of the Flies and Syria right now are similar uh, in a common space uh, and continually updating how things are still relevant in powerful ways. I think that's different to me um, in Wikipedia than so Wikipedia. What, what so that's it, one example. What would what would Joe's students do on a wiki after they see Fruitville? After they see, you know, what's the name of the movie? It's Fruitville Who's Station. Yeah, it is Fruitville Station. Well, um, I don't know what the movie is about, but no. let's assume it's um, and Joe, you can you know. Oscar Grant. But you know, like let's uh, let's just say. Right, Joe, uh, say more. <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Oh. Okay, so ten seconds. Um, Fruitville Station is our bar is our trans. Transportation station or train station, uh, and that's where Oscar Grant was shot and killed by white officer Johannes Measurely, and then uh, he only got what a year. Uh, but he shot him while he was already cuffed and on the ground and around. And a lot of people took video footage of it from the train, and that's it was it caused riots here when uh, the case when the case went to court, and that was the judgment. So our kids are going to go see that on Friday, uh, all of the seniors. And so yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So just to just to um, I mean, th just to quote Chris earlier, like so your students could write reviews of the movie, and there would so, be like yeah, twenty no, reviews come up on. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Right. So we did the we did the pre all of the pre work and pre blogging because we were trying to get the director to come to our school and hang out with us. I don't know. Um, but then there we're filming on the Berkeley campus afterwards after the film, and they're gonna film the reactions. That's a part of the mission, I guess. And then we're going to put that together in a short documentary and post that uh, for all the kids willing. And then we're trying to send that to, direct, to the director so he, again, comes and hangs out with us um, and judges at our film festival. So that's the mission. I mean, the mission is they're going to go out on the Berkeley campus after and film this. They have objectives. And then they come back and they upload that footage. And what we do with that after, I'm, I don't film many things. It's their reactions to the film. And then we end at Fruitvale Station. So there's a lot of pieces there that, that are going to go into our movie afterwards. So we're making a movie after the movie. Are you guys so going to be able to put that on YouTube? I, I hope so. I mean, I'm going to get releases for, from all these kids, so I'm hoping, and I don't know, I, we're the kids of Fruitvale Station watching Fruitvale Station. So, uh, yes, I want to get right. it on YouTube. Yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, I could get all my kids, uh, we can get all our kids through their Google Pluses, you know, to see. To watch. For sure. See, that's awesome. Wonderful. So, um, like what you just said, that project is worthy of another, you know, episode <laughs> for sure to talk about. Just to unpack that because there's so much to say. But to Paul's question, like, how does something like that fit into what I was talking about about the relevancy? It's like, you know, your story is one of race in yeah. America. It's violence, right? And and those stories keep popping up like in the news and and they're still going to be relevant uh, a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. And that's what I mean about this this place where students build knowledge in the same space is like the, the enduring themes of your story right there. Like those things are always fresh if you just know how to, um, you know, and it's not hard how to connect it to your own personal experience. Yeah. And the students have just finished Native Son, right? Or, no, they're in they're, between book two and three, so they're entering oh, they're, the they're part where they're Son. in the in. We're going to enter the core system now, and so this the timeliness of it just worked out by karma and fate and chi, and it was great. But yeah, it's pretty amazing. We're yeah. going to make the most of it. I know that. That's great. Yeah. So stay tuned. So we still teach literature. That's amazing. That's great. <laughs> but that, that, that's that connection serious, that Chris is talking yeah. about. How do you get texts that, again, you read them year after year after year and you keep them relevant? Granted, Richard Wright's Native Son is more recent than, say, a dead white man like Shakespeare, but well, it's... And just to pick on Chris for a little bit, like yeah. like I can almost say what month it is and, and these great <laughs> things about 1984 come up on Youth Voices, um, which, is, which is nice, but... Like, thinking about how that would be different if it were, you know, like you said, building over, over years would be interesting. You know, like, also, well, the, the, also the current events that are happening right now between the, the Barneys um, incident and these, I don't know if you guys read about these three kids that were picked up in Rochester and arrested 
while they're waiting at the bus because they were going to a basketball game and they arrested them for blocking the sidewalk. Um, that just happened like yesterday or the day before. So, you know, current, you know, it's, it's, it's current every single day. Chris, you wanted to respond. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, uh, it, it's, <laughs> I, I would say that, uh, you know, Snowden and uh, Bradley Manning and NSA are, you know, fairly uh, and Aaron significant something. topics that people still need to be talking about. So that's in defense mm. of George. <laughs> No, I, I, I think it's a, I, look, it's become more relevant than ever, right? That's yeah, but it's the way, I agree, though, the way we discuss it, like all mm -hmm. these, um, we fire off all these posts, I don't think it's the best way to uh, talk about it and to learn from it. It is individually. I don't know that it's best for the group. That, that's a good point, and that's worth thinking about, and we need to keep thinking. Um, so the platform has been opened up a little bit for some of that thinking. Um, be great, uh, lots of great ideas here, and I know you guys have followed through. Shatanu, do you have any final thoughts? <laughs> we have kind of lost you there, but we have some yeah. tasks for you to do. <laughs> to do? <laughs> <laughs> just the school page. We we just want to get access to you, man. Yeah, I know. I I've just been so busy, and uh, yeah, I know. Believe uh, me. <laughs> And so I have to rewrite uh, all of my curriculum to, uh, to insert Common Core uh, stuff into it. And, and I have another unit due. Apparently, it was due on Monday, but uh, no one knew about it. So it's going to be due next Monday. So, uh, yeah, well, we're, this is another show then. <laughs> it's like the pressures we face. But I really do think if we could be sharing curriculum, we could mm -hmm. help each other face them. To, you know, so yeah. Anyway, so um, anybody else have any last thoughts you want to jump in here with? Karen, has there been anything in the chat room that we should have noticed? Or not um, a couple, a couple things about um, doing hangouts, doing fishbowl hangouts with the kids. I think this whole last discussion was really rich for thinking about hangouts, and maybe that's a, you know, maybe that's something where we could do hangouts across schools and post them on wiki pages or web. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what the difference is between a wiki page and a web page, but do something like that and then you know edit the video. The that easiest, the easiest difference in our case is that it's editable by other people. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. But there is a history, just to warn, there is a history, and you can always re revert. So, okay. you know, so it's just the vandals. Just the... Cool. All right. Um, Jake's playing, so we should stop. No. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. All right. So um, th thank you all for coming. And Shantanu, especially, thank you for um, coming and catching up with us tonight. Appreciate thank you. it. Um, um, and um, Jake and... Uh, and Chris and Joe and Karen, thank you so much. Um, we uh, meet here every Wednesday evening um, at um, edtechtalk.com, um, teachers, student teachers, um, and we thank Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier for setting up that community um, several years ago. Thank you all, and we'll see you again soon. Good night. Okay, thanks. Bye, guys. Thanks. Good night.